<laughs> All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to basically the announcement of Tesla Energy. All right. So uh, what I'm going to talk about tonight is about a fundamental transformation of how the world works, about how energy is delivered uh, in, in the, in, across the Earth. This is how it is today. It's pretty bad. So that <laughs> sucks, exactly. <laughs> I just want to be clear, because sometimes some people are like confused about this. This is real, <laughs> OK? It, this is actually how most, you know, most power in the world is, is generated with, with fossil fuels. And if you look at the, the curve, that's a, a famous curve, the Keeling curve, which shows the, uh, the growth in CO2 uh, concentration in the atmosphere. And every year, it ratchets up. It gets higher and higher. And if we do nothing, that's, how, that's what, where it's headed, to, to, an, to levels that we don't even see in the fossil record. So this is, <laughs> so, well, I think, we, I think we collectively should do something about this. Uh, <laughs> and and, and not, not try to win the Darwin Award. Um, the, for us and a lot of other creatures, too. Didn't, so the, if, the way the grid works today is this. You've got coal, you've got natural gas, nuclear, hydro, um, and then wind and solar. But not, not enough wind and solar, obviously. Um, so that's, that's, that's sort of the, the grid typically in most countries. Um, and then you'll, you'll know something, which is that the, there's a quite a big difference in peak to trough usage. So the, the peak usage is typically at least twice the, the trough usage. Um, so please bear that in mind. I'm going to re reference that again later uh, in the presentation, that that's an important point. So wh what we're here to talk about is the solution. I actually think it's really a fairly obvious solution, uh, but it's something that we need to, to do. Uh, and the solution is in two parts. Part one, the sun. <laughs> We, we have we have this this handy fusion reactor in the sky called the sun. Okay, you don't have to do anything; it just works. It shows up every day and produces ridiculous amounts of power. Okay, the now a lot of people aren't clear on on how much surface area is needed to generate enough power to to completely get the United States off of fossil fuels. I mean, people really, most people have no idea. They think that it must be some huge amount of area, like maybe you need these satellites in space and like space solar power. If anyone should be in favor of space solar power, it should be me. Um, <laughs> but, but, but this is completely unnecessary <laughs> because actually very little land is needed to, to, to power, to, to get rid of all fossil fuel uh, electricity generation in the United States. That blue square there is the, is, the, is the land area that's needed to transition the United States to a zero carbon electricity situation. It's really not much. And most of that, most of that area is going to be in rooftops. So it's, it's, you, you won't need to disturb land. You won't need to find new, new areas. Um, it's mostly just going to be on existing, the roofs of existing homes and buildings. So I, I, I really think that, that that image is an important one to bear in mind when people are thinking about solar power, like how much will it take? Is it going to take some enormous amount? No, it's just that blue square. OK. <laughs> blue square. Now, the obvious problem with uh, solar power is that the sun does not shine at night. Um, <laughs> so I think most people are aware of this. Um, so this, this problem needs to be solved. We need to store the energy uh, that is generated during the day so that you can use it at night. Um, and, and also, even during the day, the, 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 the energy generation varies. There's a lot more uh, energy generated uh, in the middle of the day than at dawn or dusk. So it's very important to smooth out that energy generation and retain enough so that you can use it at night. So Now, what you may not have noticed in, in that earlier sh slide where I showed the blue square was that there was one red pixel Okay, in, in, in the blue square was a red pixel. Now it's zoomed in so you can see that red pixel. That is the size of the batteries needed to transition all of the United States to being solar with batteries. Okay, it is a very tiny amount. <laughs> okay. One pixel. <laughs> Just remember that. 
One pixel is the, is the size of the batteries needed to, for the United States to have no uh, fossil fuel generated electricity. This is, this is no room at all. So not, not a problem for solar or batteries. Now, the issue with existing batteries is that they suck, okay? <laughs> They're really horrible. <laughs> they look like that. Um, they're, they're, they're expensive, they, they're, they're, they're unreliable, they're, they're sort of stinky, ugly, bad in every way, um, very expensive. Uh, you have to get some sort of, uh, you know, you, you need to combine multiple systems. There's not one integrated uh, place you can go and buy a battery that just works, uh, which is what people really want to buy. So we have to, we have to come up with a solution. That, that, that's, the, that's the missing piece. That's the thing that's needed to, to have a proper transition to a sustainable energy world. So the missing piece is what we're going to show you tonight. This is the sort of product we call the Tesla Powerwall. Um, and if you look back against that wall, you'll see a whole bunch of them as well in different colors. <laughs> so you can pick your favorite color. And it looks like a beautiful sculpture on the wall. So it's very important. I, mean, I want to point out a few things that, that are very important about this. Um, the fact that it's wall mounted is, is vital because it means you don't need to have a battery room. Okay, you don't have to have some room filled with nasty batteries. Uh, it means that a normal household can mount this uh, on, the, on their garage or on the outside wall of their house, um, and it doesn't take up any room. It's, it's, I mean, it's flat against the wall. It, it has all of the integrated safety systems, the thermal controls, the DC to DC converter. It's designed to work very well with solar systems right out of the box. And it's, uh, it, has, it, it addresses all the needs. It's, and it's, if, you, if, you, if you're uh, uh, thinking about sort of buying a battery, what does this provide you? Well, it gives you peace of mind. So if there's a, if, if there's a, a cut in the utilities, you're always going to have power, particularly if you're in a place that's very cold. Now you, you, you don't have to worry about um, being out of power if there's, a, if there's an ice storm. Um, you can actually go, if you want, completely off grid. You can take your solar panels, charge the battery packs, and that's, and that's all you use. So it gives you safety, security, uh, it, it, and it gives you a complete and affordable solution. And the cost of this is $3,500. <laughs> and, it, it's, and it's designed so you can stack them on the wall. So if you look at the wall in the back, you'll see that there, there, are, you can, there are some that are paired up. So you can have two, you can actually stack up to nine of the power walls. So you have, I mean, if you, even if you've got a pretty big thing going on, you can have 90 kilowatt hours, this lot. <laughs> <laughs> and very importantly, this is gonna be a great solution for people in remote parts of the world where there's no electricity wires or where there's the, or where the electricity is extremely intermittent or extremely expensive. So you can take the Tesla Powerwall and it, 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 it can scale globally. Um, and in fact, I think what we'll see is something similar to what happened with, with the, uh, cell phones versus landlines, where 
the cell phones actually leapfrogged the landlines, and there wasn't a need to put landlines in a lot of countries or in remote locations. So people, people in, in a, a remote village or an island somewhere can take solar panels, combine it with the Tesla Powerwall, and, and never have to worry about having electricity lines. And I think this is, this is going to be great. You, you, having electricity lines are not the most pretty thing in the world. So being able to just have this, this solution that just works wherever you are, I think is going to be incredibly helpful to, to people that don't have electricity today. So. Um, so you, you, you can order the Powerwall uh, right now on the Tesla website. Actually, go to teslaenergy.com, and you can order the, the Powerwall right now. Um, and <laughs> we're we're going to start we're going to start shipping in approximately three or four months. Um, and initially, the, the ramp will be will be slow because these these packs will be made uh, in our Fremont factory. And then next year, the ramp will go much much higher as we transition to the Gigafactory uh, in Nevada. So this is a good solution for, for homes and perhaps for some, some small commercial applications. But what about something that scales much to much, much larger levels? So for that, we have something else. So we have the power pack. <laughs> So the, the, the Tesla power pack is designed to scale infinitely. So you, you can literally make this into a, one, a gigawatt hour class uh, solution. <laughs> you, could go, you could go gigawatt class or, or, or higher. Um, and in fact, uh, we already have uh, a, a, a one utility that wants to do a 250 megawatt hour installation just using the, the power pack. Um, and uh, now, um, I think it would be a good idea, this would be a good time to transition the power, the, the, the power that we're using in the building to being battery powered, of course. So, so let's, let's go to the camera feed to, let's go, let's go check out the power meter. Oh wow, the grid, it's actually zero. <laughs> <laughs> This entire night has been powered by batteries. Of <laughs> Not only that, the batteries were charged by the solar panels on the roof of this building. <laughs> so this entire night, everything you're experiencing is stored sunlight. So. So when I say scalable, I really mean scalable. Uh, so the, we can do gigawatt class uh, installations with the power pack. Uh, it's, the whole system is designed, it's literally designed for infinite scalability. So we could power a small city like Boulder with a gigawatt hour class uh, pack. Uh, and we can, we can keep going here. <laughs> so let's, let's, what I want to do is explore what, what is needed, what, what's really needed to transition the world to sustainable energy? Is this actually possible? Is it something that is within the ability of humanity to actually do, or is it some insurmountable, super difficult, impossible thing? Um, it's not. So with 160 million power packs, you can transition the United States. Okay? With 900 million, you can transition the world. You can basically make all electricity generation in the world uh, renewable, so all, and primarily solar, which will be so. And then, <laughs> going a little further, if, if if you wanted to transition all transport, and all electricity generation, and all all heating, to renewable, you need approximately two billion power packs. Now that may seem like an insane uh, number, and I, and I'm very tempted to do the you know the the billion thing, but. <laughs> Restrain my hand. <laughs> but um, in, in, in order to, to, it's like two billion uh, power packs. Is, is, that, is that a crazy number? Is that an impossible number? It, it, it is not, in fact. The number of cars and trucks that we have on the road is approximately two billion. 
And every, every 20 years approximately, that gets refreshed. There's 100 million new cars and trucks made every year. So th the point I want to make is that this is actually within the power of humanity to do. It, we have done things like this before. And so it's, it's not impossible. It is, it is really something that, that we, we can do. Um, and uh, in, in, in fact, it, you know, it's, it's, it's something that um, obviously we're starting to do with, with Gigafactory 1. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So the, what, what, the way we're approaching the Gigafactory is really like it's a product. So we're, we're not really thinking of it in the traditional way that people think of as, as a factory, like a building with a bunch of sort of off-the-shelf equipment in it. What we're really designing in the Gigafactory is a giant machine. It's actually, it's a really, think of like, it's like a product of, of Tesla. We're, we're, we're making this really big product that doesn't happen to move, but it's really big. And, and, and that's what we're doing, is, is Gigafactory version one. Uh, and we're, we're building that in, in Nevada right now. Uh, and there will need to be many gigafactories in the future. And with, um, you know, I, I, this, I, don't, I do want to emphasize that this is not something that we think Tesla's going to do alone. We think this, there's going to need to be many other companies building sort of gigafactory class operations of their own. And we, we hope they do. Um, and the, the Tesla policy of open sourcing of patents will continue for the gigafactory and for the power pack and for all these other things. So we want to show people, that most importantly, that, that this, this is possible. Um, that if, if you look at the, that, that, that's the future we, we could have, where the, the, the curve slowly rolls over and goes to zero, no incremental CO2. That, that's, that's the future we, we need to have. Uh, and that's, that, that's something that, I, and, and, and the path that I've talked about, the solar panels and the, and the Batteries. It's the only path that I know that can do this, um, and and I think it's something that that it's, we we must do, uh, and and we we can do, and that we will do. So, so thank thank you all for uh, coming tonight, and I hope you had a great time. Thanks.